What's interesting is when you put over where vegetation and those changes are occurring, where fires are occurring is frequent fire prevents wood encroachment from taking over landscapes. And so it just shows how critical that is in that landscape in, in higher frequencies. And so we think of historical fire frequencies being a certain amount, but understanding spatial pressure of wood encroachment, we realize that that interval actually has to go up. We have to do it more frequently to prevent the loss of some of those grasslands because of that wood encroachment next door. And so I think that's really just keeps on shining from that standpoint. When I think of prescribed fire and the use of it, you know, there's kind of two major buckets. One, I think it's just, we're trying to manipulate vegetation somehow. Sometimes that's preventing something we don't right. want in there. Sometimes it's, you know, actually modifying, like you mentioned, I'm trying to get a little bit better quality forage. It might be something where I'm trying to manipulate forage for you know, pollinators, you right. know, bloom periods, things like that. On the other side, where wood encroachment kind of goes across both of them is this idea of risk, is we have enough moisture that we can, we can grow tremendous fuel loads, herbaceous fuel loads. When you add the woody component on top of that is our fire intensity drastically goes up. And so if that fire occurs untimely, that risk is much more significant with a volatile type fuel in it. And so I think that's where fire playing into the wood encroachment is, you know, not only we're trying to keep a certain plant community there, but it matters to, to neighbors and others and just that risk, you know, if fire occurs at the wrong time. Right.